Hi folks, welcome to this video on diet composition. So what this is part of the nutrition unit again. What we're looking at here is how can the diets of different athletes be different and, and what, what are the reasons for that? There are generally two, there are many different athletes, many different performers, many different events, but we're just going to look at a basic comparison. A long distance runner versus a power athlete, a sprinter, a jumper, a thrower, something like that. What are we basically going to see for each of these um, two performers. Well, for this long distance runner, we are going to see very high carbohydrate intake. Why? When you're running long distances, remember all, you look at some of your great distance runners, Paula Radcliffe was reportedly doing anywhere between 80 and 120 miles a week when she was at the peak of her fitness. That's a hell of a lot of miles to be doing. And carbohydrates is like petrol in a fuel tank. You've got to put more energy in if you want to get the distances done. So they're going to have very high levels of uh, carbohydrates. Do you know what else they're going to have compared to a normal person? They're going to have slightly higher levels of fats. Again, why is that? Because it's an energy source, but it's an energy source for aerobic events. That's what running is. Look at this person, you're going, look, there's not an ounce of fat on them. Exactly that's the point. When you're doing miles and miles of running, they're burning all these fats off, but they're still eating them in the first place because it's providing them with energy. They're not eating fat to get fat. They're eating fat to use it as an energy source. So we're going to see a high carbohydrate intake and a high fat intake. But what else are we going to see compared to, say, a normal person is a lower protein intake. Why? They're probably just looking at maintaining muscle mass. If you've got to run 26 miles, you don't want to be carrying big bulky muscles. You don't want to be built like this, running for 26 miles. It's not going to do you any favours. You want to be lean. You want lean muscle tissue, lean muscle fibre. So in contrast to that then, let's come over to our sprinter. Do you know what? We're going to see a high carb intake again, aren't we, in the sprinter. Keep going back to it. What is carbs? It's energy. Okay. This person's training a lot. This person's training a lot. Their training might be different. This person's doing lots of long distance running. But this person's in the gym doing weights, reps, sets, plyometrics, circuits. That still needs carbs. It still needs energy. It still needs fuel. So you're going to have a decent carbohydrate intake. Okay. However, here's where the differences lie. You're going to see very low fat intake in a power athlete. Think about that for one very, very important reason. You only burn fats when you're working aerobically. This person doesn't work aerobically. Sprinting, jumping, lifting, bounding, hopping, explosive movements, they aren't aerobic activities. They're anaerobic activities. So if this person eats fat, they're not gonna burn it off during their training. They're gonna need fat for other purposes, protection, insulation, vitamin storage, but they've got to be careful. They've got to monitor their fat intake very, very carefully, okay? But what are they going to increase their intake on? Well, it's got to be protein, hasn't it? You don't get built like this guy here just by eating normal levels of protein. Don't get me wrong, he's not doubling it, trebling it, or quadrupling the amount of protein that a normal person eats. You know, a normal person eats 15% protein every day, 50% of what they eat, sorry, every day, should be protein. This guy's probably tops 20%, but it's enough. It's a higher protein intake than a normal person, a higher protein intake than this endurance runner. So you've just got to make sure that you know why they're eating each one. This, to summarise, for these two, they're both going to have a higher carbohydrate intake compared to an untrained slash normal person. This endurance runner is going to eat more fats than this power athlete because they're going to burn more of these fats off during their aerobic training, whereas this person isn't going to burn as much fat because they don't do much aerobic work. But in contrast to that, this person is going to have lower protein intake than this person. This person needs to grow and repair big muscles. This person's just got to repair smaller muscles, okay? The only other question that could come up would be looking at an athlete compared to, I keep saying normal, an untrained person, someone who doesn't do much training, right? 
what are the key comparisons? This person is going to have very high carb intake, right? You're talking, if you think back to your balanced diet question, you're talking 60 to 75%, whereas this person is going to have about 55% carbohydrate intake every single day. So we've got a high carbohydrate intake for a trained person, okay? However, as a result of that, remember, not everything can increase. They're going to actually reduce their fat intake as a percentage. That's mainly maybe only going to be 20 to 25%, whereas a normal person, an untrained person, might consume 30% fats every day. You might be thinking, hang on, whoa, if this person isn't training, why are they increasing more fat? Remember, fat you burn aerobically. Believe it or not, this guy is working aerobically. Whilst he's sat there, do it, not doing very much, he's taking on board oxygen. When he's walking around, he's taking on board oxygen. So he will be burning fat when he's, you know, just sat still. When this person's running, say, uphill or downhill, they'll actually start to be burning more carbohydrates because they're working slightly more anaerobically. Okay? So we are going to slightly reduce our fat intake. And generally, as a rule, you know... Protein is going to remain around about the same, around about 15%. However, I think the examiners have got to be pretty tight if they don't give you the max to say that actually for an athlete, it could well do with being slightly higher, okay? 17 to 20%, something like that. Why? Because this person is needing to grow and repair more muscle tissue than that person who isn't doing any training at all. Okay, so they're the general principles that we follow in terms of dietary advice for athletes in different sports and athletes compared to non-athletes. Okay, hope, hope it's been useful to you folks.